Hi friends, in today's video, I'll be talking about ASML. I have quite a bit of materials to cover, so let's jump in. I'll be covering the following, brief introduction of ASML, lithography and its history, the reason why I bought ASML, including monopoly business, demand trend, dividends and share buyback, and I will also covering the risks, including EUV is hard to scale, small number of customers, and also high valuation. Let's get into the details. ASML Holding is a Dutch company and is currently the largest supplier in the world of photolithography systems for the semiconductor industry. Photolithography is the process of transferring geometric shapes on a mass to a surface of a silicon wafer. The word lithography comes from the Greek lithos meaning stones and graphia meaning to write. It means quite literally writing on stones. In the case of a semiconductor lithography, the stones are silicon wafer and the patterns are written with a light sensitive polymer called a photoresist. The chart that I'm showing here is the illustration of Moore's law. Moore's law is the observation that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit double about every two years. Moore's law states that we can expect the speed and capability of our computers to increase every a couple of years and we will pay less for them. The process note refers to a specific semiconductor manufacturing process and its design rule. Right now we are at 5 nanometers and we will move to 3 nanometers and 2 nanometers in the next few years. The nanometer generally refers to the fabrication process rather than the processors itself. A lower number means we can pack the chip more densely which generally gives a performance boost. Why are smaller semiconductors better in tech? Smaller chips means more smaller transistors can be packed into a tinier space. Electrons have to travel a shorter distance, saving energy and time. That's why smaller nanometer processors are typically faster than the larger ones and why newer generations of increasingly smaller processors can be speeder without using more energy. Let's take a look at the evolutions of photolithography. When semiconductor manufacturing started in the 1960s, the way scientists would imagine a mass design onto a silicon wafer is through a technique called contact printing. Essentially, they would take the mass, have it sit right on top of the photoresist layer and then illuminate. The problem with this is that they could not really scale this up to a manufacturing because as you take this mass on and off, it takes pieces of the photoresist layer with it. And over time, this mass will degrade which will ultimately lead to a defect and the device won't you. A quick way to fix this was the next evolution known as proximity printing. Basically, they take the mass and separate it from the photoresist so there's a gap that they then illuminate. They get rid of the contamination defects because they are not touching the photoresist layer anymore. The trouble with this is the resolution is limited as they can only get features of about 2 microns in size. Next evolution is known as lithography projection printing. They illuminate through a condenser lens that then project an image onto the silicon with its photoresist layer. A big advantage of this system is that they can now shrink. This now opens up a resolution of nanometers rather than micrometers, allow them to make even smaller features. The next evolution is a technique called immersion or the wet system. They basically put a layer of water on top of the photoresist layer. What this does is that with this water layer, they are able to change the refraction angle of light to enter the photoresist at a much sharper angle, which allows to have features with a higher resolution. The next step in this evolution is to change the light source to extreme ultra ultraviolet light or EUV. They start with just a simple CO2 laser, amplify it and bring the laser into a vessel. On top of this vessel is a generator that drops in little droplets of the metal tin. They hit each one of these droplets of tin with two pulses of lasers. The first pulse takes the tin and flattens it, then they hit it again with a second bigger pulse that obliterates and vaporizes it, which then creates a plasma. Energy is released as light and the wavelength of this light is at extreme ultraviolet. They then collect this light with a parabolic mirror, focus it and bring it into the scanner. So the extreme ultraviolet or the EUV is just the light with a wavelength of about 13.5 nanometer. Next, I will walk through the reason why I bought ASML. The reason number one is it is a monopoly business. ASML gross profit margin is quite high at around 40 to 50 percent. Usually, in a business that is highly profitable, there will be other competitors that will step in to have a piece of cake as well, hence driving down the profit margin. However, for ASML, this isn't the case. 
because there are no other companies that compete with them. So this is the article from The Economist, how ASML become the chip making biggest monopoly. So they stated that ASML is the world's sole manufacturer of the most advanced equipment critical to the modern chip making. And it alone has harnessed extreme ultraviolet UV light with a wavelength of just 13.5 nanometers. So UV technology is very difficult and ASML is the only one company know how to do it. Let's find out why the UV technology is so difficult. I think this Reddit post gives a very good explanation. So the comment is from Louis Hibbery. As transistor got smaller and smaller, so does the wavelength of the light being used to make the structures. But when wavelengths get so tiny, they end up getting absorbed materials, mirrors, the mass itself and never make it to the wafer. So for EUV, SML had to basically create a new way to make light. And the solution is to drip molten tin into the chamber and hit it with a laser to create a bright light or plasma that can make it through the series of mirrors and mass to the wafers. And it happens 50,000 times a minute. Semiconductor manufacturing is one of the closest things to magic that exists in day-to-day -day life. Incredible engineering. Let's move on to the next reason, which is increasing demand for high-performance chip. Let's Let's take a look at this article from Reuters. TSMC now expect to lift capital spending on the production and development of advanced chips to between 25 billion to 28 billion this year, as much as 60% higher than the amount it spent in 2020. Demand for chips has been so high that manufacturers around the world are sounding alarm bells about shortages. Several car makers have seen production plans hit by the insufficient supply, leading TSMC to see a jump in demand from automakers in the fourth quarter. Future market insights also see that the EUV lithography market to grow at 22% Kager, demand to be moderately impacted by coronavirus pandemic as semiconductor production falls. As long as there is high demand for high-performance chip, semiconductor companies like Samsung and TSMC will continue to expand their capacity, and they definitely need the EUV from the ASML. The third reason why I bought ASML is it is a very profitable business which then leads to dividends and share buyback. Let's take a look at the cash return policy. ASML aims to pay an annual dividend that will grow over time. Here you can see that the dividend has been increasing in the past 10 years. After paying dividend, ASML used remaining free cash flow for share buyback. This will shrink the outstanding shares and increase the earning per share forward. Imagine that after you invested in the companies and just sit there and do nothing, and your percentage ownership of the company will increase over time because of the decrease in the outstanding shares. So this is definitely good for the investor. Let's also talk about the risk. The first one that I would like to highlight is that EUV is hard to scale. Because the manufacturing process is so difficult and requires high hundreds of parts from other suppliers, it is hard to scale the manufacturing of the EUV. It was only a couple of weeks ago when ASML announced that they have shipped their 100 EUV to the customers. So although the demand for EUV is high, production will take time. The second risk is that there are small numbers of customers. Their customers are mainly just TSMC and Samsung. This is generally bad for ASML because if one of their customers reduce the capital spending, that will hurt ASML business significantly. Take TSMC as an example. When US ban the use of American technology to make chips for Huawei that has forced TSMC to stop taking orders from its client. But TSMC could shift the production capacity to another client which then cushion the impact to their business. ASML on the other hand will not have such advantage because their business are mostly relying on TSMC and Samsung. When it comes to pricing, a business that has small number of customers will also have difficulty to raise prices in the future. However, this may not be so applicable to ASML as there is no other suppliers for EUV. The third risk is high valuation. ASML valuation is not cheap. The PE ratio is currently at 61. Yes, there is high visibility on the growth rate at least for the next few years. However, semiconductor industry is always cyclical and hence a lower price over earning ratio is required to provide the margin of safety. So valuation is definitely something that we should keep in mind. I do believe that it is crucial that we do the research on the companies before the market correction so that we know which companies to buy when the market experience drawdown in the future. One reason that I'm being cautious and this reason is specific to myself is that the risk of concentration. In the semiconductor industry, my top pick is TSMC. Hence, adding too much ASML will pose a concentration risk to my portfolio. Hence, I only allocate a very small percentage of my portfolio to ASML. That's all I have for today's video. If you're interested with this kind of content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, please join the Telegram group and we can exchange ideas and analysis. Link is in the description. Hope you like it and see you in the next one. Cheers!